Hi folks, I hope you're all well. Firstly, I just want to apologise for not having put out a video in the last couple of weeks. I've had a somewhat disastrous period of about three weeks where my car got driven into by a lorry on the motorway and my laptop fell out of a van in its bag and screen shattered and my phone broke and I just numerous things which have meant I haven't been able to make videos for you, so apologies for that. Today, what I'm going to be doing is giving you, uh, much in the spirit of the last video, a few more pedalboard tips. This is to do with maintenance, stuff that I do month in, month out to keep my pedalboard, and to a lesser extent, my guitars in tip-top condition. Next week, we'll be getting back to more guitar stuff. I'm going to put out a lesson on a Steve Lukather lick. So, let's make a start. Tip number one, tape the battery terminal ends within your pedals. So providing that you are not using batteries to power them, standalone, and that you are using uh, a power supply, it's wise to tape off your battery terminal so that there is no risk of them connecting internally with the chassis or with another component. So all we need is some electrical tape, which you buy from most places, and we are just going to cover the two terminals like that, and then reassemble our pedal as normal. Some pedals, and I've only, to be honest, I've only seen this on this one, which is this one from Spaceman FX, because they're very, very, very detail conscious in their pedal making, which is awesome. Um, but they actually have a rubber clip on the inside, which does exactly this job, but most of them do not. So that's the first thing that I'd recommend you do. Tip number two, invest in a can of this. This is Deoxit D5 by Kaig, that's C-A-I-G. I'll put a link to where you can buy it on Amazon. This is for deoxidizing electronic components. This can be used for effects pedals and also for your guitar itself. It's really simple to use. All we would do, for example, and this, by the way, is one of the reasons why I tend to leave a little bit of room around my pedals and the board so that I can do this while they're in situ. But all we would do is remove our jack, spray some of this deoxit, and then work it in by plugging in and unplugging our cable a couple of times. Let it dry and then repeat the same process again in a minute and then do that for each connection with each pedal on your board. This will just keep your connections good, basically. That was a very technical way of putting it, but you know what I mean. Sometimes we can have uh, noise build up either in pots or in switches or you, you can have a dodgy connection caused by a build of oxidize, oxidization and this will stave that off so invest in a kind of this i have one in my gig bag all the time tip number three is this stuff in the uk it's called pedalboard tape in the states it is called jewel lock and i would really recommend this if you don't want your pedals moving so this isn't necessary for everyone because if your pedalboard mostly lives at home and you like changing pedals out on it all the time then probably not for you but if you are gigging and or if you're having to ship your gear around or it's been you know taken in different forms of transit by plane or boat or coach or bus or car or whatever there's nothing worse than taking the lid off your case and all your pedals being strewn all over the place so since i've been using this that's never happened it's really really strong it's basically made up of rows and rows of little identical plastic mushrooms that lock to one another like this and you don't need a lot of it either so if i were taking a pedal like this I would obviously remove any existing Velcro and clean the residual adhesive off using something like lighter fluid. And then I only really need like an inch square on each corner and that'll be sufficient. You apply it, you leave it overnight for the glue to cure so it's really strong. And then when you're ready, you will uh, apply its opposing side. Now, while I remember, you can do this two ways. You can apply the opposing bit to the pedal board itself, but what I do and find it easier is to actually apply it to the pedal and then when you're ready take the adhesive backing off this and then plonk the whole thing on your board at the same time just makes positioning a little bit easier tip number four so for OCD dorks like me um, invest in a few soft bristle brushes so 
not just if you're crippling the OCD like myself, but if you are, for example, playing a lot of bar gigs or outdoor gigs or festivals, you'll often find that you have grass, bits of dust and dirt build up on your board. Something like this is great because they're soft enough that you can actually brush pedals with them and not move all your knobs. Um, but it's just a great quick way of getting all the dust and grit and grime off your pedals themselves and actually in between the boards and all the cables. So I bought a pack of something like I don't know, five brushes of all different sizes for about four quid um, and it's been working great so far. So that's my quick tip number four or three, I can't remember how many we've done. Okay, next tip uh, relates a little bit more to guitars. So a couple of products which I've been using for a while and that I really like are this specific cleaner by PRS and this microfiber by Fender. I've used a bunch of different guitar cleaners over time and a lot of them leave a slightly kind of oily residue. I found this one doesn't do that and also, in my experience anyway, it's nitro safe. So I have a couple of guitars with nitro finish. This works great, it doesn't seem to cause any problems for them whatsoever, it doesn't react in any sort of way and it keeps them really clean. And, and, it feels like properly clean. I know that sounds stupid, but I think you'll know what I mean. There's no kind of oily residue left. And then I've recently started using this microfiber. I have some generic ones, but I really like this Fender one because it's kind of big and fluffy and is great specifically for glossy finish guitars. So I've got my black Starcaster in the other room and my Tyler, which is a nightmare to try and get fingerprints out of. This does it without breaking a sweat. So really good. Okay, next tip. I've given up on numbering them because I've forgotten where we are. If you do any soldering by yourself, if you make your own cables, I would really recommend... <laughs> I'd, re <laughs> I'd really recommend picking up one of these. They look ridiculous, but they work great. So again, this is about, I don't know, 30 bucks from Amazon. And it has saved me many hours of pain. Uh, for me, a lot of the time, I'm soldering actually in situ because I root the pedals Underneath the board, it means that I'm kind of in a bit of an awkward space. So this is like having six extra hands, which is really, really useful. And generally seems to minimize the risk of you burning yourself or dropping your soldering iron on the carpet and things like that. So I'd really recommend picking up one of these if you're making your own cables. And if you're not making your own cables, I'd, I'd give it a shot. I've got a tutorial on how to do it um, a little bit further back in my channel. And again, since I've started making my own, I've never had a cable fail. And when you're doing it in a bulk, it can definitely be cheaper than buying patch cables. So one thing that I forgot was that, and I noticed this recently because it happened to me, all of the knobs on your pedals, most of the time they will have a little adjustment on them, a little flathead screwdriver fitting. Now over time, this can sometimes work itself loose and either the knob could fall off in transit, which has happened to me, or it can just mean that it's not gripping the control underneath, so you're not doing what you think you're doing when you're moving a knob. So just periodically go around with a small flathead screwdriver and tighten up all of these to keep your pedals working as they should. So my, my final tip um, might seem like a really obvious one, but it is to invest in a power supply with isolated outputs. So this is something that I overlooked when I was a bit younger and when I finally bought a big boy power supply like a Foodoo Lab or something like that, I was amazed what a difference it made in terms of how much signal noise was reduced within my chain. So that's something that although it can be kind of painful spending several hundred pounds on something that doesn't make any cool sounds, it's really worth it. And that kind of approach is, it, it runs true for everything really. So when it comes to cables as well, again, really your rig is only going to be as good or as strong as its weakest component. So this is why I encourage trying to as much as you can by doing stuff yourself and by building stuff yourself, optimise every step in your chain and you'll really notice an accumulative difference overall. Okay guys, I hope that was of some use. As I said, we'll be getting back to playing stuff right away. I just wanted to get something out to you guys. A little bit in the vein of the last video um, in the interim while I've been sorting my life out. So I hope you found that useful. These are things that I do pretty much month in, month out. 
and one thing I'll say is that when I build a board I tend to pretty much stick with that board for several years and by doing this regularly I never have any problems. I don't have cables break, I don't tend to have odd noises or crackles coming in. Um, everything sounds and looks and functions as it should until I decide to build my next board. So hopefully these tips can help you out a little bit. Okay guys, I will see you all very soon. Bye.